p.m. Pacific, check out the rundownlive.com. Mike P. Chris Don H. The Rundown, Monday through Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Check out the rundownlive.com. What up, guys? We are live here. It is Thursday, October 9th, live here at the Rundown Live, rundownlive.com. Mike Pachesny, Kristan Harris. We have a guest tonight. Robert Mathis has joined us again. He's been on the show before. It's been a while, so we had to get the Rebel Love show back on here. Robert Revel's uh, going to be joining us here in a few minutes. But other than that, it's another Thursday here, Kristan. It's always fun to have a new guest, isn't it, Mike? A new person every day, even though we've had him on before to catch up with old friends. It kind of feels like Mr. Rogers' neighborhood here. Right, Uh, right. I'm just kidding. But it's really nice to catch up with these guys. Especially when Um, it's it's been a while. It's been, like, months. So, you know, there's a lot that's happened since the last time. Hey, and I want to mention, today in the show tips, people were recommending guests. So uh, we are getting emails. We got three or four uh, just in the last couple hours. Uh, show tips guys so uh, keep sending them we really appreciate it and we're gonna start reading them out loud uh, on the show good ones um, send us your messages let love us know and hate mail yes either we, or we like we to can use both. criticism I'm sure there's plenty of people that think oh man Kristan that guy don't know what he's talking about he's he's crazy and he's all over the place what's what's going on with his ADHD he needs help it could it could be it could be but uh we're gonna have robert on here in a few minutes we should probably get into the site and then uh we'll go from there uh the merch quake man it's going excellent yeah guys uh we can't express how much love you guys have shown us we're at 244 percent of our goal we originally were looking to just raise 500 dollars um to see uh, if we could do that and create an online store. And the response has been incredible. We're at 244%. That's $1,220. There's 11 days yet and limited slots on some of these things. So make sure you guys contribute to get your inaugural Rundown Live merch. We may print a few extra copies. There might be some, obviously, to fill the store. And we'll probably have a new design or two uh, since you guys have supported us. And we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And you can find that in the top right-hand side of our website. That's at therundownlive.com. If you're not there now, that's where you should be. You should be at The Rundown Live. There we have new articles and news up daily. Make sure you guys share them on your Facebook, your Twitter, all your social media networking. There, there's so many different fancy ways today, Mike, to spread the information and the news of liberty. It's very important that we get this information out there, and it's very important that you guys share and like the articles we post on the website. Uh, Facebook has things like algorithms, much of it put in place due to the Ron Paul success of the web. They have algorithms to limit um, how people see things on Facebook. And in order for us to beat those, we need people to like and share. So definitely check that out. Um, also, we're on all the apps. You got a tablet, you got a PC, you got a cell phone. We're on Droid, iTunes, Windows, and Amazon platforms. Download that app. You can uh, listen to our past, po- or past podcasts. Listen to them at your convenience on the way to work or on the way home. Even uh, if you want to listen to us on uh, when you're, you're falling asleep, that's when I listen to uh, talk radio. Is, uh, I fall asleep to it every, every night, Mike. Even uh, today, I'll, I'll probably listen to some old episode either, you know, some historic event or speech or something. So check out the Rundown Live app, over 300, some podcasts to download, great guests. It's free, and you can send us your show tips from it. Um, Also, tune in. If you want to listen to us live, we have a 24-7 radio station. The only time it's down is when Mike falls asleep at night. Um, Just kidding, guys. It's usually up 24-7. Go to tune in. Tune in radio. Add us. Uh, The Rundown Live has Mike and I and many other guests, such as the Average Liberators and Infowars periodically. So check that out. Also, I want to mention Private Internet Access is holding all payments of the Rundown Live. I don't know why. Uh, they said till further notice. So um, I do suggest you guys still support them, uh, even though that we're just honest here. I had to throw that out there. But uh, privacy is uh, important. So check out Private Internet Access. Um, basically, it uh, allows you to surf. Download and conversate anonymously. It's in a type right-hand corner, $39.95, covers five computers. Not a bad deal. Check that out. Also, I want to thank our syndication, FPRN, Daily Paul, and uh, Conspiracy Wire and Wide Awake. 
Sounds good, man. That's a lot of stuff. Uh, so I don't know. Is there anything that we need to mention before we bring on Robert? Not really, man, but I want to mention, because I don't get a much chance to talk about this, this is real short, about Giants, but uh, the Giants made news uh, today. Uh, it was uh, Five News in Arkansas. There's a diver that found evidence showing Giants lived in Arkansas, and the History Channel has contacted uh, this uh, person that lives there, and um, I guess he claims that there's some Giants that were 10 feet long, maybe some as tall as 12 feet uh, tall. These are human beings, and as you guys know, I'm a big researcher on ancient giant humans and uh, weird things of that <laughs> sort. So I thought that was interesting that giants made the news, and even this day. So, yeah, I don't. You know, that's not really my expertise, but I do know that you're interested in that. I just always have to wonder when I hear about these stories. They just always seem a little fake to me. Like they always seem like they could be. Not true. Well, it's really hard when you have uh, you know thousands of newspaper documents su supported by legitimate organizations with legitimate scientists that were around at. As those long times, as we can see hardcore proof, that's see that's the thing. I need the proof. It's like with the the UFO videos. Even when we have the evidence, it's like yeah, well, it could be photoshopped. It could be the it government could be manipulated. You never but know. I, I did yeah. want to mention we do have Robert Rebel on the Rebel Love Show host. Uh, how you doing, Rob? I am doing great, guys. How you guys doing? Good, man. It's been a while since we had you on bro so it's good to have you back i know it's been uh it's been since last year yeah i believe last time we talked uh you were still contemplating moving out to the hampshire and uh kind of checking out the free state and uh why don't you fill us in what's kind of happened since then well i moved here in uh january and but oh my god best decision I ever made in my life if you're if you are very libertarian and you feel like you are by yourself moved to New Hampshire, you're surrounded by like-minded individuals. It's, it's unbelievable. But uh, I've been here, um, I uh, started up this show with uh, Joel Valenzuela, who actually just did his last show this past week. But nonetheless, the show continues on, um, but we've done a lot of different activism. I've done a lot of jury notification outreach here. Uh, I've done uh, some, co there's a lot of cop blocking that happened during the summer. Like the DUI checkpoints here in Manchester, you'll see like 40, uh, 50 people come out and cop block a DUI checkpoint, which I've never even can, can, can contemplate. Uh, I've also uh, been doing some New Hampshire independence outreach as well. Yeah, that's a lot of awesome work, man. I know we have uh, cop blockers here as well in the Milwaukee area. And anytime you know you're uh, you know filming the police, especially when they set up their little checkpoint zones, we don't even know if they're truly legal. I know in Wisconsin they can't legally have checkpoints, so they have easy enforcement zones. So you know that's how they get around that. Well, now they're throwing people in jail just because they may have Ebola. They don't even know and uh, things of that nature. That's that here, too. Yeah, that happened yep. here in Kenosha. Now, apparently, uh, somebody was exposed to Ebola, and they're just locked away in quarantine. And then, uh, apparently, jail ICE, ca ICE came and picked them up, though. So they are now no longer in the state, I guess. They just oh. come and take you away. The government comes uh, when you're apparently stricken with some kind of illness, and they... they uh, disappear you. Yeah, they disappear you off somewhere. Well, the government does whatever they want to do. So FEMA we, uh, camp. Yeah, FEMA camps, NDAA, yeah, yeah they, they do whatever they want to do, unfortunately. It seems all too often like they have been. But, well, how's that big government doing out there in uh, the Hampshire? I know that we first saw these uh, MRAP-type vehicles out that direction when people kind of first exposed the Bearcats. And, you know, now look what's happened since then. Well, I know, uh, like, at least here, there's, like, been a concentrated effort to get rid of the Bearcats. I know uh, when uh, the city of Concord uh, last year decided to get a uh, Bearcat, they had about 500 people show up to their city hall complaining, like, you know, most of them were porcupines, free staters, but not all of them were. But a lot of people went up and, like, we don't need, you know, military on the street. The police don't need to be militarized. You know, uh, Mar Andy Griffith, less Baghdad. But uh, I know that's happened. Uh, I mean, obviously, they still got their grants, but uh, they actually used, uh, when they had the Bearcat, uh, when they got the Bearcat conquered, uh, they actually used free staters as a uh, reason. They said they were a domestic terrorist group and that that's why they needed the grant from, uh, from Homeland Security uh, to get a Bearcat. Well, we always heard about the snipers at Keene Fest, the Keene Pumpkin Fest, you know, where terrorists like to congregate. Yeah, actually, um, 
we kind of have a secret surprise and uh in case that happens again I'm not, i don't want to i don't want to say what it is on radio but we 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 have a surprise possibly waiting that's for literally that. true for the people that don't know there's a pumpkin fest and uh you know what was there maybe a few thousand people throughout the weekend and they have snipers on the roof yes that's ridiculous uh, yeah, the um, free keeners out there uh, that blog for free keen. I actually do blog for free keen now as well. But um, the multiple of them went up a ladder and took photos of uh, people in uh, military uh, feds or whatnot in keen. They were in civilian clothes, but they had sniper rifles perched on multiple buildings that were in downtown Keene during the pumpkin festival. It's just crazy to think that, you know, uh, we started hearing these things a couple years ago. We heard about the Bearcat. We, uh, you know, people made a big deal about it. Now, fast forward almost a year later, you have things like Ferguson going on where they just roll out the Bearcats with the LRADs on the media, on the protesters. It doesn't really matter. We had matter. Joe Biggs on yesterday. He was shot. Well, yeah, he, he was in Ferguson. Lit- he, yeah, he got uh, literally shot with a rubber bullet in Ferguson as media. Oh, I absolutely believe it. I remember watching, even going back the year before that with the whole Boston Strong thing where literally they shut down most of the city over a teenager with a, uh, with a pressure cooker. You know, I mean, it's the same, it's the same thing. Uh, the government's going to use any reason they can to roll out their military toys and do whatever they can to show that they have control and they're like martial. I mean, in my opinion, martial law is pretty much already in existence in this country. They just use it when they want to use it. Absolutely, and that's why it's good to have like communities like you guys have out there. And it's not like you guys live all on one street, and uh, although they have like a community center and things like that, uh, it's got to be good to have a lot of like-minded individuals around. Perfect example. Um, this happened about a month or two ago. Uh, one uh, one of the other free staters in the uh, in Manchester got pulled over by the police, and his uh, passenger. Uh, made a post on a local Facebook group saying, hey, I got pulled over at uh, um, on Main Street and Bridge. Within 10 uh, minutes, there was at least 10 people out there with cameras making sure that the police weren't uh, messing with him. Like, where else? I, I've never heard of anyone else, like, you know, just making a post on Facebook and having people come out from around the city to film. Were they in Jimmy John uniforms? Were they, were they that fast or what? They weren't that. Well, in all honesty, it's, it was like a block and a half away from one of the. Uh, uh, there's a clubhouse in Manchester where a lot of free sitters uh, frequent. So that w- it was not that far away from that. But they were they saw the Facebook uh, posts and they all scrambled down there. It kind of reminds me when I got arrested at NATO, I posted on Twitter, and the next thing you know, everybody's like retweeting it and sharing it, and it's like. That's that's really a good thing if you have that kind of community in the area for just like what you mentioned earlier, the DUI checkpoints and other scenarios like that. Like, hey, man, our rights are being abused. This is somebody's family member here, you know, getting rolled right now. We have to at least hold the government accountable. I mean, at least film the situation. You don't have to get involved. Oh, absolutely. I mean, well, first off, you should always film the police. If, if the police are ever, well, I would say any government official, but definitely police, they're the enforcement wing of the government. Like, if you're dealing with a police officer, I don't care if they're friendly or not, you take out your cell phone, have a portable camera on you, something, record what they're doing. Because I, I, for one, don't trust any cop, in my opinion. And I'm sure there's a lot of them that have infiltrated the community there, let me tell you. Just like you said, the guys, the snipers are in plain clothes. I'm uh, sure you got them coming to the meetings and listening to uh, the Rundown Live and Rebel Love Show. Moving I'm, in next door. Yeah, you never know. Ray across the street. Right. Oh, there's, a, there's always a joke of who's the Fed. I mean, in all honesty, like anyone that, av- if you ever have a, a large group of people getting together that's liberty oriented, um, the first person that, that advocates violence, you know that's the Fed immediately. You know, you know that's the person that, like the ancient provocateur, they're, if they're talking about violence, don't associate with that person. Or destroying somebody's yeah, property yeah, or we're, something. We're not interventionalists. We don't, we don't want to get in trouble. We, we're not aggressionists. We, we don't respect wanna, everybody's rights. Yeah, do, yeah. do whatever you want. But Even if we don't to, agree. You right. my nose, you know? No, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, uh, that's that's the big thing. I haven't witnessed that personally, though. I'll be honest. We go to uh, their meetings. Uh, <laughs> you know, we'll crash. I, I uh, 
I crashed there um, about uh, last month. They had a police commissioner's meeting for Manchester where uh, like the police commission, all the, the it's open to the public. They actually have a blog. No one ever do- goes to these things. So uh, me and one of my co-hosts, uh, Andrew, uh, we both went cameras in hand and we crashed their uh, their police commissioner's meeting and sat through like videotaping their entire meeting. Um, they were shocked that people showed up with cameras, to be perfectly honest. And uh, half the time during it, uh, they were kind of like very nervous even to talk in front of us on camera. Well, they don't want to be held accountable for anything uh, that they say that may be controversial or viewed as inappropriate or wrong, you know, because... On either end, they could say something maybe, I don't want one of these MRAPs, which a lot of them feel, you know, a lot of the police feel like they don't want these uh, military vehicles on the street. A lot of them are returning vets who went across seas to prevent those things from being on our street. The reason why we send our children to go die is so that we don't have to have a war zone here. And now we Allegedly, have open, allegedly. You know, Let me throw all, that in there. Well, no, ISIS supposedly is getting caught at the border, right, guys? But we have open borders, but we need to increase and ramp up the police state so we can protect us from the terrorists we're allowing in instead of protecting the borders and keeping them from getting in so we don't have to have a police state here. Well, I, I'll disagree with you about the borders. I don't I don't think we everyone should be able to freely travel on this planet. Well, um, I agree with but, you. Uh, but the thing is, I can't go into Mexico or, you know, if Mexico had open borders and we had open borders and everyone had open borders. You can walk across okay. the border. It's just everyone getting back have in. Open borders. But at any rate, no, I mean, the police should do police work, not be the military. The police now... Nowadays, around the country, it doesn't matter what city you're in, uh, they, they look as if they literally came off the streets of Baghdad. They're wearing body armor. They got a fully automatic weapons. They're, rock, they're running around with, you know, Bearcats and MRAPs and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, every city's turning into what looks like Baghdad right now. Well, they look like G.I. Joe guys, you know, and uh, it's pretty interesting. I, I kind of joked with Joe Biggs about there not being a lot of female dressed up like G.I. Joe. They're all guys. I asked them, were there any females dressed up like, you know, military people? And he, I he think did. That's an assumption, though, Kristen. Uh, I think yeah, you're I didn't throwing that a little. I mean, well, I'm, I'm sure there's saying, a lot of guys are they selecting these guys and only putting them in the military. No, I don't think so. I think everyone. I think it's really uh, neutral. It's just that when they put on the black masks and the black uniforms, tell. it's it's to give the illusion of force and to take gender out of the issue. There is no gender. It's merely the state versus the people, and that's the that's the black. The black think, represents right, right. the state. I mean, that's yeah, they they have. I mean, yeah, all the police officers like they used to look, you know, pleasant way back in the day. Now they all look like they're like the bad guys. They're all pirates. Black and, I mean, yeah. what are the pirates? They had- wrestlers. They're huge. These guys are ridiculously ripped. Oh, they're Even definitely the women. The women up. are all in shape. You know. Oh, yeah, they're definitely roided up for sure. I mean, that's m- almost all these police officers, not all of them, but either they're overly overweight or they're very roided up. Like you never see like a normal fit like police officer anymore it's very odd i don't think there's any uh normal fit people in america left anymore (laughs) at least Uh, not in the midwest i'll I'll be honest i I have i've become that become uh, yeah no i used to i used to weigh like 310 pounds i i I remember uh, that i I remember i i I liberate my mind and i liberate my body did you uh go like gmo free tell us about that uh, I went, uh, I did low carb for a while and then I actually went vegetarian, but I just eat healthy now. Like I try to buy as much organic as I can. If, if the, if food comes through a drive through window, do not eat it. It's poison. And you know, that, that's my big thing. Just eat healthy. If like if people listening to this show, if like you, you've obviously liberated your mind and just finding this show on the internet, to be perfectly honest. Um, if you can do that, you can liberate your mind. I did it. Anyone else can do it. Well, and it's not that hard. Organic's getting cheaper. I, I went to Walmart and I bought it. I loaded up on soup. It was $2 a can. Organic. You know, I don't want to support Walmart and say that's the place to shop, but it was only two bucks. Organic brand. Not bad. You can get a box of macaroni cheese at the pick and save by us. Buck and, you know, buck 60 full circle and it tastes better than the mac and crap. Not suggesting that you fade your kids mac and cheese, but there's ways to get around, at least start progressing towards are you telling uh, me there's organic at walmart is that what you just said yeah i did not know that i'm kind of surprised that there's organic i didn't know that at all i got my bags uh organic uh apple cider vinegar i take every day uh there i wonder if that's just for labeling purposes i wonder if it it says organic and then you you turn it over on the back it says not organic (laughs) 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 contains no real juice 
But uh, yeah, I mean, just eat healthy. I mean, that's that's the big thing. You, know, you gotta make that mental decision, though, for people. I mean, you you can't. Uh, you gotta make a mental decision to wake up. You gotta make a mental decision to be healthy. Was it more like just the food? Was it just the food, or I mean, did you really start being more active, or like what was it? The mental decision. It was all down. mental. It was all, no, all mental. mental. All mental. You can't. You will never get in shape or lose weight or anything like that until you actually make the mental decision to, to break that barrier that you're going to do that. And once you do that, you'll be fine. You know, but that, you have to make that decision. That's an you interesting transgression, right? And it's like I, I, I wonder, did you do the weight thing before you took the move on? I think you did, right? Yes, yes, I lost all the weight before I even uh, made the move. So I mean, that's like oh, wow. a, that's like a full transformation. I mean, it seems like mentally, physically, oh. you kind of start to understand everything at that point. Was part of the weight loss uh, due to the fact that you switched to organic? Do you think? Do you think that contributed to the loss? I mean, it probably did a little bit, um, but for the most part, it was just low. I mean, I did Atkins, which is low carb uh, or close to paleo, which works great for some people. It worked great for me for a while. Uh, and then I, I'll be honest, I got tired of meat. I actually, uh, I, I can piss off both uh, vegans and uh, paleo people because I did both diets and I lost half of it doing Atkins and the other half doing vegetarian. Now I just eat healthy. I'll have meat and veg, you know, I, I, I lower it, but I try to just eat as healthy as I can. Well, I mean, this is coming from a guy who literally did it. You know, we have no reason to doubt you. You're not selling a book. You know what no, I mean? I, I got photos <laughs> on my Facebook where I'm like 300 some pounds and on my Instagram Whoa, feed. So like I intense. have photos. And this guy's like, just yeah. saying all you have to do is just eat better. Like he's not saying he went to the gym and like bench press 250 pounds every day I, and stuff. I, I would go running from time to time, but I would say that's maybe like 5 or 10% of the, the weight loss. It wasn't like a crazy amount like going like five miles every day for five days, you know, five out of seven days a week or anything anything like that it was barely anything it was mostly it was just avoiding mental. the poison like you said not going to isn't fast it funny food though that we eat every day you have to and, find the good stuff i mean the good and, stuff isn't out there like everywhere and also i'm gonna i'm gonna you know i sound like a crazy person here in new hampshire but you guys will understand stop drinking pop all right uh or soda you know stop drinking any sugary drink like i i, I probably uh relate at least 20 or 30 pounds is just not drinking any kind of uh, soda pop at, at all. Just stop drinking Coke. That's one of my here. vices that, that I can't kick it. The caffeine, I love the sugar. Replace I love it. it. With, I love it. it with coffee. I don't I drink coffee. I, I, I switched it out with organic coffee. I get organic coffee. They sell it at Pick and Save now. So I was like, all right, organic coffee. I mean, if you could make a replacement, do you think coffee would be a better replacement for soda at this yeah. point? Um, I would just say stop drinking it, uh, replace it with tea, juices, coffee, stuff like that. I actually don't even put sugar in my coffee. I don't drink it black. I'll add like, you know, cream, but I don't, I don't add any sugar even to my coffee anymore. I put organic milk. I just put some organic whole milk in there. I'll actually use, I'll use almond milk. I've heard a lot of people love the almond milk. I actually I tried that. Almond milk. Uh, it, it doesn't. It, it gets you out of the dairy category. Then you're no longer in the dairy, even though it's milk. Yeah, I mean, I still eat cheese, but I I I prefer almond milk. I just prefer it. Just tastes cleaner to me. That's interesting, and it, you know. It just shows that how people can really make a mental transformation and it really can affect you physically. I mean, that's an awesome thing to me. That shows you how powerful the mind can actually be. When you decide you're going to change and you really go all in, you can really do it. And it doesn't just, you can't, it's not just your body, it's also mentally too. You change the way you treat people, you change the way you interact. I mean, it's, it's, it's really cool actually. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, if you can liberate your mind, you can liberate your body. There's no reason why anyone can't do it. What kind of stuff have you been getting into on the show, man? I mean, are you doing uh, guests lately, or are you kind yes, of we do, talking? Yeah, we do a um, a once a week uh, broadcast from Manchester. Manchester is kind of like the hub of the Free State Project. There's roughly five or six hundred uh, Free Staters that live in the Manchester area. Uh, the rest are spread out in like Keene and on the coast, uh, north up into the Lakes region. Uh, of New Hampshire, and what we do is uh, we bring in uh, influential activists once a week that are doing something in the na uh, in the community, and we also it's very more relaxed feel. So like we're all sitting at the same table. Uh, check out RebelLoveShow.com. You can find all the videos on there. Um, but uh, basically, I like to pitch it as we kind of do it as a um, 
kind of like a Joe Rogan experience meets the Free State Project, where it's kind of like seeing what the people are like here. Well, you know, why they like we kind of go over a lot of times like how they discovered this, why are they here, what's going on. Uh, we've talked about multiple different activism that's happened in the area, uh, everything from uh, you know cop blockings, New Hampshire independence that we've been doing lately, jury nullification we've done. We go in the backstories of different people, like uh, Rich Paul has been on our show uh, right before he went back to jail, actually, um, unfortunately. He's locked but, up uh, again right now, isn't he? Yeah, he vi- he violated probation. Well, they say he did. I don't I don't believe that. He actually should be out uh, in a few days, to my knowledge. He should be out in a couple days. He's actually going to be keynote uh, speaker at Keenvention, uh, which is a activist convention in Keen coming up at the end of this month. Um, but yeah, our show is literally, uh, if you want an idea of what the people are like in, uh, New Hampshire for the free state project, we actually bring people in that are in the Liberty community that were born and raised here. Like we have, uh, you know, locals that come on the show as well. Um, but if you want a, a taste, an idea of what, what Liberty activists are like living all together in the same area, check out our show, Rebel Love Show. Well, I mean, and isn't the motto live free or die? Does it still say that on their plates or no? Yes. Yes, it does. It absolutely does say live free or die on New Hampshire license plates. And, I Though mean, I, oh, go ahead. No, I've actually expanded my, like moving here, I uh, I came with the ideology of uh, live free or die. Like, I mean, I, I, I want to be a free human being. Uh, but living here, being around so many loving people, I've really embraced... Uh, love free like I, I i my love for humanity is like expanded tenfold over what it used to be and uh i love living in this community it's by far the best thing that's ever happened to me you know it's i was going to ask you earlier when we were getting into this stuff uh, is it something now that you've actually moved out there and been a part of it that you think can be recreated in other places do you think if people put you know the time in to build community that they could do this all over Yes, it's absolutely possible, but I mean, you know as well as I do, libertarians in general are spread thin around the planet, especially in this country. Um, I mean, you go to meet, like I used to go to Ron Paul meetups in Chicago, like Cook County had like 8 million people, 8 people would show up, you know, there'd be a Bitcoin meetup here in Manchester, 40 people show up in a city of 100,000. I mean, that's still not a huge amount of people, but Come on, that's, ratio the, the that's ratio is just turnout. enormous. Yeah, like I, you can walk down like downtown Manchester, and I keep running into people that I know that are other Liberty activists and whatnot. Um, like they, ha- you'll see me. There'll be Facebook groups where someone just po- make a post saying, "Hey, who wants to go to dinner?" And, or there's a potential new mover coming, or something along those lines, and you know, twenty, thirty people will show up just out of like within one day. Um, I, I don't see that happening anywhere. Uh, I mean, I'm sure it probably does at some point. I, I, I don't. It's definitely possible that other com- liberty communities can be built up in free societies around the planet. But you know who's really trying is uh, the Colorado guys that we are Change Colorado. They got their uh, community center building up there, and they have like the potlucks. And it takes time to build these kind of things, man. Look how long it took us here in Milwaukee, Kristan, and we still only have you know a, a tight knit group of people. Yeah, but we're building the network. That's just it. It's, uh, you know, teaching it out, working with other people and spreading the message of liberty and freedom and having them. It's great to see these other people pursue their dreams. Look at the guys at like Waking Up Wisconsin. Those are some local activists and they really took their idea to put out a magazine and they've done it. You know, and it's fantastic. But they reached out to us because we were already out there. And that's the thing. Free State is already there. And just like Rob here, he went out to the Free State. And I'm just hoping that this can kind of catch on in areas all over the country. I I hope that any uh, community being created or like, in all honesty, I'm I'm obviously I'm biased. I'm saying move here. But if you want to stay there and build your own community, I hope like this inspires other people to do the same. And I hope that also, you know, like if you guys, you know, the the, uh, community is being built elsewhere, that that inspires other people to do the same if they don't want to move. I I understand that some people have family ties. They just can't leave that geographical area no matter what they want to do. I completely understand that. If that's the case build a society there, try and get other people to convert and, you know, build free societies around the planet. That's, I would love to see that happen. But again, I mean, libertarians, we're really spread thin around the planet. Even though like this movement has, I've watched it grow tremendously because of Ron Paul, but it, it's still not there where it needs to be yet, unfortunately. I wish it was, but at least here, I am not, I'm not the lone nut 
You know what I'm saying? Like you go, you go around. Like you know, you guys have your community there, but so many people around around this country, they're they're listening to your show or other shows and stuff like that. You know, they they know the message, they understand it, but they're not around people that understand it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and it's uh, hard for them to communicate with someone that doesn't have any idea what they're talking about. Yeah, just especially for it's some. I'm sorry, especially some that they're passionate about. It's it's really hard because that's all you want to do. At that point, you're like on fire, and then all you want to talk to is other people that are like minded. And sometimes it's just difficult to talk to people, but you got to find ways of reaching out. And I, I think great ways is everyone has a niche. My recommendation: if you are alone and you don't want to move. Friend people on Facebook that think like you. Like, get out of, like, you know, back in the day, like, meeting people, like, and having internet friends was kind of considered taboo. You know what I'm saying? Nerdy. It, yeah. It's not nerdy anymore. It's 2014. People, you know, people use dating apps just to meet, like, you know, get a date. So, like, meeting people on the internet and friending people on the internet. That's not a taboo thing anymore. Go on Facebook. Go into a bunch of, like, you know, different Facebook groups, whatever, like, your interest is. Um, and friend everyone in there. Make those friends. Make those connections. So at least you have some sort of interaction with another human being that thinks like you. Even if they're not physically, geographically right in front of you, at least you have that connection with other human beings. Well, right. And you kind of can build off of that. You can kind of learn how to talk with people and how to share ideas. And, you know, I think people just need to be more outgoing. Kind of how uh, you just started a podcast. We started a podcast. You know, we put our real names out there. We put our lives out there. You know what I mean? This is a risk when what we're talking about is controversial. There's a lot of people that don't like the things we're talking about. So, I mean, it's interesting that people would even take these risks and uh, build communities and try to build alternative media and kind of throw out that mainstream rhetoric of having a white picket fence and a regular old job. And, you know, it, this is really new and different. Look, at the end of the day, you live once. All right. And if you're going to, you know, if you really believe strongly in whatever it is, especially freedom, voice your opinion. I mean, if they're going to come for you, they're going to come for you. Like, I mean, I'm using my real name now. I don't go by, you, you have Rebel on there, which I, it was like my old alias. I actually go by my real name now, uh, Rob Mathias. Um, but uh, I live free now as much as I can. I mean, if if the boot comes down, the boot comes down. I, also, I, I hope that's never going to be the case. But, uh, you know, it's liberating to be your to be who you really are. Um, I used to be a huge introvert uh, a couple of years ago, and now I go out of my way to be who I want to be today, not who I was back then. And that's part of the living free. I think that's part of that transformation where who is limiting what you can be or, uh, you know, how positive you can be. Because, you know, a guy like you, you're not going around and spreading all this negativity. You're just going out and be a good person and you're helping people and you're doing the right thing. and You're being a moral individual. You're not like stealing. I'm assuming these things. But uh, <laughs> this is this is most libertarians. It really is. Most people respect others rights and just like we were talking about non-aggression and not hurting other people's property that's really the way they go about life uh, one thing that i love about this community here the non-aggression principle is almost to the point of a religious edict like if you violate the nap that you got you got hell to pay in regards to social uh reaction to it because people your reputation is everything all right, literally, especially in the in the libertarian world, especially those that believe in the non-aggression principle. Your well, we're reputation screwed. is everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, right? you don't me want, and Kristan, you don't want this, anyway. <laughs> you, don't want the, you don't want the state to get involved with your personal life, so you have to handle things on a personal person basis. Um, you, it's your, it's up to you to be a good person because every everyone knows who you are. Your reputation will precede you. It's like your social currency, and if you wrong someone then everyone's going to know that, especially with the internet, people talk, Facebook, everything like that. I mean, some people may view it as drama or shit talking or whatnot. I don't view it as that. I view, literally view it as living, leaving a so-called Yelp review on another human being because your reputation means everything. And if other people are going to hold you to a standard of non-aggression uh, and as a peaceful human being, uh, it's it, it even puts more pressure on you to be an outstanding human being because other people are going to hold you to that. It's interesting how you introduce the internet into 
the reputation because it kind of introduces like that hive mind where if you are an immoral right. person and you are hurting people and stealing and killing and these things that are looked down upon in society it would spread through social media and socially people would hear about it whereas you know back in the olden day this had to travel by word of mouth and people may not have heard now it's like instant right over the internet people make these judgments about maybe you. somebody won't serve you a brewski or they won't sell you something who knows but that can be Did used it? both ways that can be used yeah. good or bad I, I'm true. I'm okay with regular people having that knowledge and having being able to share that information. I mean, obviously, I don't want the government having you know people that have the legitimacy to use force and violence against me to have that information. Obviously, um, but the average human being that like I I interact with normally, like yeah, they should obviously have that information about me and vice versa. Like I need to know who I'm dealing with. Well, as long as they're not feds, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> you know so what's what? your take on privacy then? my take on privacy obviously like you know if you're in your own home uh you have the right to privacy like if you're in your home or you own a business you don't want people recording or something like that that's the business owner the property right the property owner uh if you own that house you're in that house that's your domain that's your kingdom but in regards to um public life being it out in public uh, I'm all in favor of being able to record everything I do with my entire life and I'll be honest anywhere I go I should be able to record my life I have a bad memory and I don't I have no qualms over using um, uh, using technology to like back up my memory uh oh uh, are you gonna be a transhumanist Rob uh oh here it goes uh, I, I, I kind of I'm not I uh, I won't lie I, uh, I hope to live long enough to live forever yes um, but, uh, if that happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But at the end of the day, um, I use my eyes and my ears, my, all my senses to record my life with my brain. I should be able to use, uh, something to back that up as well if I would like to. Um, that's, that's my own personal opinion on my life. It's my life. You don't own the photons bouncing off of your skin. You know, if I'm using, if you don't want me to record you or whatnot, which I'm not, I don't always record. Well, maybe but, if you record some government property, you might need to pay a permit now. Did you see that? It was like in the parks. Yeah. yeah, I saw that. That's absolutely ridiculous. That's absolutely insane that they're char they they did that to those people. I saw that article. It's ridiculous. Like you don't need a permission slip to take a photo of a tree. Well, at least not usually. Apparently, we do now. Maybe it is a very special tree. I just I I don't know. I don't know how I feel about the the eternal life transhumanist movement it it seems like the merging of technology with humans seems inevitable but is it natural is it something is it the end of humanity you know per se well i mean you can make the argument that the day humanity uh created a language was the day that you know biology kind of ceased to exist because information has been exchanged at an exponential rate ever since we've been able to communicate with each other like tools and everything else has continued to increase exponentially since that has happened. Just, I mean, the last couple thousand years compared to the, wh how long humanity has actually existed is in, absolutely insane. Yeah, it's literally almost straight up at this point. They say uh, 2045 is singularity when it's, it's literally going to be a straight and up and down line. It's going to get really weird really quick, kids. Be uh, be ready. But uh, all, honestly, like we live in the most exciting time to be alive and obviously uh, yeah i hate the government i hate what they're doing you know but at the same time the fact that we can all communicate right now on you know via like our laptops and like broadcast this to like thousands of people listening you know sharing our ideas and our um thoughts with other people basically if you think about it almost tele uh, telepathically you know we're just using a device to share our, our thoughts with other people um how far is that going to go and how quickly is that going to go um we really do live in exciting times to be alive if people just open up their eyes right. it really is and people can really fight back against that although big government is making that much more difficult with regulation and uh suppressing certain technologies we just had an article up on the rundown live the other day about you know how cars have been able to run off water since like the 60s or the 50s and oh you know we'd want gasoline water is free why would you do that just and imagine cars. Just imagine the are the level of life uh, of that we would have if government wasn't in the way. 
Well, that is true. I mean, things would be a lot more advanced. They hold us back. But uh, isn't there a lot of other corporations that could hold us back, too, by buying the patents to these things like they have? I mean, yeah. It, yeah, but you know, honestly, corporations only have their power because the government gave them that ability. Like, gov- governments give corporations a legal loophole where, like, if there wasn't a government, corporations wouldn't exist. It'd just be a business. And if it was just a business, whoever's the owner of that business would be held personally liable for whatever that business does. And they would but, be allowed to fail if they failed. They wouldn't be propped up by taxpayer bought, money. Yeah, bought, I, exactly. But with, but with corporations, like, you, you may run a business, but you're not held liable. The corporation is held liable for whatever it may or may have done um and they, the corporation can get sued but the ceo whoever owns that business they're not being sued for it they're not being held actually personally liable for the actions that they ordered to take place So why would they care they don't but, but at the same time i mean they, they're given that power by the government well even deer have government apparently Kristan. Right, they have roads. They have they have trails. <laughs> they have trails. But who will build the roads? The deer <laughs> apparently know. have government now. Yeah, well, we're going. going we don't need roads. <laughs> I mean, we should have flying cars by now. But I mean, well, technology wise and whatnot, we don't need roads anymore. We talked about that. I said when I was a kid, I'm 35. I saw Back to the Future, and they were telling us in 20 years this is what the future would be like. There's no reason why that can't happen in our lifetime. I mean, there's no reason why you can't have uh, some sort of flying cars or whatnot. You know, I mean, besides with the whole thing with roads, like roads can be built with voluntary donations and whatnot. Like you don't need someone pointing a gun to steal money from you to build a road. You know, a good idea doesn't require force. Well, it does if you want to scam people, and that's what government loves to do. They love to make people afraid so they can scam them and leech off them uh, so they don't have to do anything. They don't have to put in any real work. They don't have to have any type of skill. You know, they don't, They're don't. they not the ones uh, breaking their backs, uh, working fields, or having some type of industrial skill or uh, even any service skill for that matter. You know, what does a politician really do other than uh, get paid by lobbyists and vote the way they tell them to vote? Yeah, one thing I actually love here in uh, New Hampshire, the politicians, like in the state house, they don't make any money. They make a hundred dollars for the entire year. So, like all these all these people in the state house here in New Hampshire, they basically they're they're going there for free. So, um, a lot of people don't run. Uh, this com- upcoming election, November, there's thir- I believe thirty free staters that are running for state house. Most likely, twenty of them will get elected, uh, if not more. I mean, I don't know where else in the, in the country that. Uh, uh, libertarians are getting elected left and right, but here, I mean, normally you see like one libertarian here and there getting elected. Here, there's going to be at least twenty in the state house that are going to be elected. Uh, I wonder how up. that's going to affect like legislation and uh, rules in the city, like with the Robin Hooding and stuff like that. That case is actually going to the New Hampshire Supreme Court in a few days. Uh, wow. This this it actually got turned. It was turned down at the. Uh, like appellate court or whatnot, and the city is appealing it. So now it's going to be uh, heard in front of the New Hampshire Supreme Court later this month. Huh? The city got beaten. Now they want to appeal. All the, the city of Keene hates Free Keen. They hate. They hate them with a passion. They're, they do everything <laughs> they possibly can to stop them. Uh, there's a lot of other cases that you're going to see coming up at some point, especially in regards to the CAC, uh, which is the Keene Activist Center. Uh, they've declared it a. Uh, Legal loopholes. They declared it a church ah. uh, to avoid to avoid uh, and even have ministers. But they did that. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, they actually say they really do believe it. Who's the but, minister? Uh, Chris Cantwell. Wasn't no, at the okay. Simpsons? <laughs> yeah, Chris Cantwell. He's, uh, I don't think he's allowed there. He, he's across the street. No, he's, he's across, across the, the street. Yes, he yes, we know. He's allowed at That's the funny. now, apparently. He actually is back allowed back in there, but um, I don't believe he's a minister of the CAC, no. <laughs> hey, that's actually pretty funny that they actually uh, got that through, that they are now a church, apparently. Well, they... They got legal uh, standing from New Ham- uh, from the state of New Hampshire to be that, but and you know the city's not going to stand for them not collecting property tax on that building. So obviously they're going to do whatever they can at some point to take that house. It may be like three or four or five years from now going through all the legal processes to actually get it, but at some point they will go after them because obviously you know at the end of the day the government doesn't think you actually own something. If you don't pay them, they will come take it. And With there's the only ones that will use force, yeah. If yeah. You, don't, you don't see, uh, you know, uh, your Best Buy, Best Buy coming after you with Blackwater security to get the $70 you owe them on a credit card, you know. But they might yeah. someday. <laughs> you never know. 
You never know. But at the end of the day with property tax, I mean, all property tax anywhere, if you own your house, you shouldn't have to pay taxes on it. That's not, that's basically paying rent. If you don't pay your rent, they evict you from your house. Um, yeah, you don't own anything. If well, you, especially uh, if you own aspect. the land, apparently. But they go through the legal process still. But anyways, the legal. Oh, the, the legal process means that they wrote their own rules on right. how they can steal your house. Yes, the, that's the legal process. <laughs> well, it's federal land now because there's endangered monkeys that live here underground. So we have and, to excavate it and you all have to move now. And we're going to let China use it to make. Uh, yes, because we owe them court. money. Yeah. So they have so to be able yeah. to do that yes but we can't do that no 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 you can't it's do that bad, we owe china money monkeys. yes bad yes but well, hey, hey we no, don't don't fall me and we that's not my debt they they owe china money i don't owe china well, you were damn, born I, owed well like when they say every person's born in debt like you 40, have a social security thousand. number rob just, we know just, it just, be, just because i was born on this plantation known as united states of america doesn't mean that i choose to like voluntarily you know and uh enslave myself to that debt no thank you they they can claim that but i don't you don't accept your forty thousand dollar childhood debt when you came out of the womb you are you're immediately owing forty thousand dollars to the federal reserve he's saying is his parents owe it because you know it goes on to the hundred and eighty so do they double it what eighty thousand then i don't know how that works they they can do whatever they want to do but at the end of the day i don't owe a damn penny to the federal government they they can say i do in regards to taxes and the debt and everything else but that's that's their debt they got in trouble spending that money not me i i'm not involved it's just like with the wars. I'm not involved with I didn't choose to go to war. I'm not choosing to kill brown people around the planet. That's so that's not that's war. not me. You know? Say that again? I said we don't vote to go to war anymore anymore. It isn't like you have any say. It's like uh, they <laughs> go and do it. And even if there was a say. Even if there was a vote. Even if they even if there was a declaration At of war. At least give us a vote. At least pretend like you care and have a vote, right? You mean like you- the elections? Ah, <laughs> even, even, even if even if Congress Hello. declared war, I they, they still don't represent me, and I don't consent to them killing people in my name. I I can I don't care agree. if there's a vote or not. That's the problem I have with I government. As well. You know, yeah. I have this little problem, and it's called government, Rob. You know, it's kind of it's kind of worrisome. It bothers me at night when I try to sleep. Well, I try not to. I, I, I'll be perfectly honest. As much as I hate the government. I try not to worry about it. Like I worry about like local things going on here and like paying attention to what's you know trying to build a free voluntary society here. That's kind of been my focus. It's Much like, more I, productive. Well, and how has <laughs> it been growing? It has to be growing out there. How many people do you have at the free state? I've, I, I know you're trying to get twenty k, right? They're trying to get twenty thousand signers. I know they passed uh, sixteen thousand about a month ago. Um, as of early movers, I know that I think I want to say they're around uh, 1,700 or 1,600, something like that. I've already met about 100 people just in Manchester alone that have moved since I came here. Um, I know in the last uh, year, there's been about f- five or 600 people that have moved uh, into the state since uh, in the last year. I know the momentum has definitely increased. Uh, I wish it was a lot more than it is now, obviously. Um, but I like case when we recorded our show last night and, uh, there was two new movers that moved just uh, a few weeks ago that were, they came over to hang out and whatnot. Um, I'm always meeting new people every time I'm here. I've lost track of how many, uh, names and faces that I've met since I've got, uh, moved here. But you know, what's weird is I've been all over the country and I've always met people that are moving that direction out towards New Hampshire. Isn't yeah, that everyone strange? Talks, or Colorado, one of those. And two. everybody's always like, oh, you gotta go to Pork Fest, and I've still never you been. Sh- oh yeah, my I've God. never been there oh, either. Oh, you guys, pl- please, this June, do whatever you possibly can to go to Pork Fest. If we start planning is, now, we can make it happen. You, yeah, we'd have you can to. broadcast your show from there. There's multiple different uh, radio and podcasters doing their shows from Pork Fest, but it was a life-changing moment. I mean, imagine going to a festival where you know hundreds of people. Like, not just a couple people, but hundreds and hundreds of like people. Like, literally everyone there. Yeah, everyone <laughs> there. Like, I literally spent... This is what I did at Pork Fest. I, I called it Walk in the Beat. Uh, me and a friend, like, we literally just w- went um, campsite to campsite for, like, the entire week for, like, a couple hours. And every time we went to one, we knew who they were and we hung out. And we just kept doing that, going around all of Pork Fest. 
and always running. Like every time you turn around, you run into somebody you know. And it was the most real, intense, loving moment of my life. Everybody always has Go good to- things. Everybody is always like, it's so awesome and it's great. And it's just like, it's hard to imagine, I guess, because we really haven't had things like that. I mean, there was things like Paul Fest and Bilderberg where you get together with all these activists. But I guess it's not really the same. This is more of a good time and yeah, everybody's it's going out camping. It's not like a protest. A right. Everybody's yeah. kind of relaxing. Of friends. Yep. It's uh it's magical. Uh you need to get to get get to Pork Fest next year. Even if you don't ever move to New Hampshire, just go to Pork Fest. It it's the best week of your life. If you're if you're very liberty minded, being around a thousand other people that think just like you is unbelievable. Uh Rob, we literally only have like two minutes left with you, so I want to make sure you can plug your show, let people know where they can find it, YouTube's, Twitters, all that good stuff before we let you go, man. You can go to rebelloveshow.com. That's where we post all the shows. You can uh, also go to youtube.com, uh, youtube.com slash rebelloveshow, facebook.com slash rebelloveshow. Uh, we also have our show on Stitcher and iTunes. Um, and uh, yeah, find us on there. Watch our show. Listen to us. Uh, if you want an idea of what life is like here in the Shire, uh, give us a listen and uh, you might just uh, make the move. Any- See, some people are asking in the chat, uh, when is Pork Fest and uh, where, what city is it in? Pork Just Fest to- is in Lancaster, New Hampshire. Uh, it is every June. So I believe it's going to be the end. It's, it's usually the end of June. Also, if you get a chance, go to Liberty Forum, which is actually right here in Manchester this March. It's more of like a conference, but you also get the, you meet all the similar people that go to Pork Fest. And I was just going to uh, leave it with one last thing, Rob. If you had any advice for people that are, like, thinking about starting a YouTube channel or a podcast, uh, what would you want to tell them to leave the show? If you're doing a podcast, all right, learn learn how, learn how your skills before you even start. I highly recommend uh, CreamyRadioAudio.com. It's a blog by Michael Dean. He goes step-by-step step on how to change all your audio settings and like how to put out like a quality audio product because at the end of the day, you really want good audio if you're going to do a podcast. In regards to that, uh, be yourself. Find a niche that you're really good at and also personality sells. Like you want to be, you know, don't just do something that everyone else is doing. Make it your own. Don't just like, you know, you guys do something that's very unique. Have a unique idea. Uh, like a unique concept that you're going to do and be very passionate about it and you'll find subscribers much appreciated rebel love show is the website robert Matthias, i appreciate it man thanks for coming to hang out with us we got to have you back on sometime Uh, absolutely all right peace guys take it easy bro there goes rob another good talk as per usual uh you know podcasting is an interesting thing i think it's really changing the way the media works you know people are able to just start their own shows now and uh speak their minds and you know people weed out the real from the fake seemingly fairly easily mike remember when we started doing our podcast in yes it was terrible the only but we were the only where as far as we could find the only milwaukee radio station that really was doing podcasting religiously and uh you know after we started having a lot of success uh, we saw all the local Milwaukee. I mean, almost everyone has a podcast now, I think. Well, you, you know, know I, podcasts were always popular, but it's like, what is the subject matter? Are you just talking about, like, what you had for dinner? Or are you actually right? having real conversations with well-known people from all Asking around the world? questions. You know, or not so hard. Or not, and having fun and learning who they are, sure. I mean, because so. this really is opportunity to get a side of people that you may not see. When you get a guy like Robert Rebel or Joe Biggs or Tomorrow Dan Badandi, you might see a side of these guys on the Rundown Live that you would never see on InfoWars, that you would never see on their own shows. Because, you know, we have our own style, just like Rob was talking about. And we, we try to be random and have a lot of fun with you guys, and every show is different. You know, so definitely check them out. Download them on the podcast app. The, the app is free. You can get that at the rundownlive.com if you guys haven't had a chance to visit it. Go there. Uh, add us on TuneIn. Make sure you guys donate to the Merch Indiegogo campaign. Uh, we can't thank you guys enough. We're at 244% with 11 days That's to go. That's crazy. You guys are awesome. Crazy. That's crazy. This is a check high five. Out. Yep. That's a high five. No, that's a clap. One is a high five. Yeah, that was my uh, golf clap. Kristan was was clapping, I was high five. Actually, I feel kind of like, uh, anyways. Uh, Anyways, check it out. Keep donating. Um, You can get some cool gear if you haven't yet. Uh, Check it out. 
inaugural stuff, limited edition. We're opening our store. Thank you guys so much. We really appreciate it. So that's all I got. I want to send some love, love out to the chat today. Uh, chat room's you. awesome. You guys are always uh, fueling the show. The numbers are way up in the chat. We always like to watch the conversation, uh, try to participate when we can. If you don't know what we're talking about, you need to go over to therundownlive.com slash live and join us live in the chat Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. There's such an awesome community there of people asking awesome questions and having awesome conversation With during the, the show every night. I mean, this is a whole community of people that's right here, right for you guys to work on information that people want to hear. So that being said, don't forget about FPR and radio, FPR and radio.com, 12 a.m. Central, 1 a.m. Eastern. That's the encore. Don't forget about Corey Washington. He's live at 10 p.m. wideawakeamerica.com slash live. That site is back up, by the way. It came up last night right after we got off the air right in time for uh cory show so that was awesome that's awesome uh and uh he had professor gillen on last night so that was a good show i don't know what he's doing tonight but if you guys want to hang out Corey's live at 10 p.m wideawakeamerica.com slash live anything else otherwise we're out of here tomorrow's friday and dan badani is coming on the rundown dan live badani. no i think that's all i got you guys make sure you stay tuned oh send us your show tips and your guest requests keep sending us emails Show tips at therundownlive.com, and don't forget to visit it today. You guys have a good night. We're out of here. Rundownlive.com. Send us emails. Follow us on Twitter. Subscribe on YouTube. Stay classy, more. We're out of here, guys. Kisses. There is we love no you in the CFR. chat. Check out the Rundown Live.